Hello all, Alison here and welcome back to A Few Minutes of Fun. I'm having a few minutes of fun with the gel plate again today, this time working with my Paper Artsy Stamps released in February 2024, the Botanical Textures, lovely loose sketchy botanical sketches. There are background plates and ephemera and little poetry fragments on each of them. But the thing I'm going to focus on today are these botanical sketches and the view from above that you get on each one. So for instance, on this one, you get an umbrella for stem with that beautiful arrangement of blossoms on the top, but you also get the same plant viewed from above. And one of the things when I was designing these stamps was I, I wanted them to really work well with gel plate printing and somehow mimic the effects I enjoy getting with real natural elements, whether that's dried flower stems or leaves or the tops of poppy seed heads, which you get here, which you can use direct on the plate. But you haven't always got access to that. So in the middle of winter, maybe I want to do some of that. And I designed these stamps so that they would work well on a gel plate. So I just wanted to show you a little bit of that. If you're interested in the real nature elements, there is already a few minutes of fun, which I'll link in the description below, where you can see me working with actual plant stems. But today I'm going to show you a few prints just to have a few minutes of fun pulling prints using these sketchy stamps. I've got some favourite colours of Paper Artsy Fresco finished chalk acrylic paint here. Uh, some of them come in my specially curated sets. Some of them are ones that are just drawn from the whole palette of amazing colours from Paper Artsy. And some cheap copy paper. It's, it's just printer paper. Very, very basic. I've got the gel plate, obviously, I've got a brayer, and I've got a little mat where I can roll out my paint. So I'm going to clear the decks a little bit so that I can see what I'm doing, and I'll be right back to have a few minutes of fun with all of these goodies. There we are. Anyone who knows me knows that I love meadow flowers, meadow grasses, wildflowers, seed heads, all of those kinds of things were part of the thinking behind this set and with the gel plate to just try and maybe create that feel of a walk in a summer sunny meadow. So I'm just, I'm not going to be too precious about this. I'm going to pop some colours down onto the gel plate. That's uh, Granny Smith, Bora Bora, and maybe a touch of Azure along the top, sort of vaguely in a ground and sky kind of a way. But as I brayer, you'll see that those colours will start to mix and blend and I'm very happy for them to do that and just making sure I haven't got too much paint on there and then the very simple task is to press the stamps down onto the gel plate I'm not pressing hard that's a light touch and then I'm going to give it a quick wipe because one of the things you always want to think about if you're working with stamps and paint is not allowing the paint to set into the spaces in your stamp. If that happens, it, it is gonna be harder to get it out. It's, it's not impossible, but you could end up wrecking a stamp. So if you're working with paints and stamps, it's a good idea to have a, a cloth nearby or even pop a little spritz of water onto the stamp when you're done with it. So I can sort of half see what's happening on the plate here. And I'm just trying to spread out my various meadow flower stems and position them one high, one low, varying that positioning so that I'm creating a whole meadow's worth of stems. Quick little wipe. And then I'm going to get one of these sheets of copy paper, cheap copy paper, and just line it up with the sheet underneath. This is this is why I've got a sheet of paper underneath the gel plate, because I've got the square gel plate and I might want to do a double printing at some point. This will enable me to line up the image I'm getting by lining up the paper I'm printing with, with the paper that is underneath the gel plate. Let's have a pull and see what we've got. So as always, rough, imperfect, that's the way I like it. You can see that maybe I haven't picked up enough paint 
maybe I do need to press a little bit harder, or maybe what I need to do is make sure I don't have quite such a thick application of paint. But that's a that's a pretty good starting place. Uh, you've got to start somewhere, right? Uh, I might pop a little bit of sea glass on. And this, of course, is going to mix with what's already on the brayer. That's part of the fun for me. I'm not cleaning off the brayer in between prints. I've got, I've got what's there is there, and I'm happy to let that happen. So these are quite blobby. So I just want to try and spread them out so that I can maybe avoid what I had in this one, that big blob of azure at the top. So I want to make sure I really get into those layers of paint make sure that I've smoothed them out. So it's a it's a less colour varied print, this one, and I think this one I might stick to just poppies. So I'm going to press the poppies down there. Quite a firm pressure this time, just to experiment with how that changes things. If you saw my samples for the stamp release of these sets in February 2024, uh, you'll know that I created many, many prints and made a little accordion book with those. So that's going to be a nice one. You can see that quite clearly on the plate there so that that one really has picked up quite nicely. If I felt like it, I could go back in and pull this one more clearly, but I, I think I'm going to stick with that. Now I'm going to use this view from above of the poppy seed heads just to add some bits of texture in various places. So this is going to be a full-on poppy seed affair and maybe one right in the middle there. And you can see I'm doing repeat stampings with that in the hopes that it'll work. As it gets more paint on it, the image might be slightly less precise, but I think I'm going to live with it. Whatever happens, I'm going to enjoy the result. So lining the paper up with the paper underneath, just in case I decide I want to do something extra over the top of it later but given we're only having a few minutes of fun today and I am going to try to stick to just a few minutes of fun uh, that will be there we go so you can see what I mean about pressing down firmly so that I get this lovely clear printing and you can see the poppy seed head that I did right at the end where that stamp was quite covered covered with paint obviously covered with paint it's going to pick up less paint so I'm left with a slightly less obvious stamping in the middle but I sort of quite like that. I'm going to do as I said I was going to and give those stamps a little spritz of water on there just to make sure that while I play with something else they're not getting all dry with paint stuck in the gaps. So a little wipe it's a really good habit to get into just taking it off like that. And let's see, what do we want? Maybe a bit of Bora Bora. Beautiful sea turquoise. Maybe a bit of Zingy Granny Smith down here towards the bottom. Maybe even a little bit of Hyde Park. That's a really dark green. You can see I've used that one a lot. I've, I've pulled the lid right off. That'll provide a nice bit of contrast going on down the bottom there. I might give this a little wipe because I think we had quite a lot of that mid spring green on there and I'd like a little bit less of it. So allowing those paints to mix and meld and then just taking them up into the sky a little bit. So yeah, we've got some lovely zingy greens going on down there. Enjoying that a lot. What shall we use? I think I'm going to use the bells. So I'll put the details of these stamps obviously in the description down below but they are Eclectica Alice and Bomber, so that's E-A-B, Eclectica is one of the lines, one of the many lines of stamps that Paper Artsy have. Uh, Eclectica Alice and Bomber E-A-B 36, the Bells edition, that's this one with these little jingle bells of the flaxseed heads. E-A-B 37, which is the poppy edition, and E-A-B 38, which is the umbellifers so I think, uh, yeah, I think I might mix and match in some poppy onto this one. Uh, just following my gut. <laughs> just suddenly decided I wanted a different shape on there alongside the bells. So again, just looking for the spaces on the gel plate, looking for where there's nothing going on yet. 
wiping off the paint, just the bulk of it. Uh, I think that might be. No, let's have let's have some more poppies up here. Very tall stems coming in from the distance. Stamped in. Yeah, good. I like that. And I might do the same thing just over here. So you're just getting the corner partial stamping of those poppy seed heads. And I might put a few blades of grass. So one of the things you can do with these, you've got these lovely stems here and they're the perfect way to add a few grass stems in between. So lining up with the paper underneath, again, just in case. I don't want to do anything extra, but as I say, with just a few minutes of fun, it'll probably be minimal. Nice firm pressure down to make sure you're picking up all that paint. And away we come. Ooh, see, very happy with that one. That's a lovely zingy meadow to go for a walk in. Uh, with the white imprint you're left with, because we're picking paint up with the stamps, as opposed to putting ink or paint down onto the plate. It's sort of the reverse process. I think it's time for some midnight, don't you? A little bit of dark blue midnight onto there, and maybe a little bit of the azure. So we've got ourselves a more of a blue sky affair going on. I think Bora Bora might need to be in there again, because I'm quite enjoying the Bora Bora today. And I've got some green on here, so I'm going to take that green down to the bottom to start with and then start blending those other colours that I've brought into the mix. So again, just making sure that midnight went down in quite a blob. So just making sure that I've allowed it to spread out. And again, I really don't mind the marks of the brayer on there. It's, um, it's pleasurable to me to have that additional texture Got my paper a little bit out of kilter and it's time for the umbellifa probably my favorite of all the wildflowers I any kind of umbellifa i mean they are the whole of the parsley family the whole of the carrot family all produce these beautiful umbrella shaped flowers the multiple stalks with blooms on the top of them and it's it's always been a favorite summer flower of mine. I, I have never needed big opulent <laughs> flowers. I'm perfectly happy for a little wild flower action. So over there you can see there's maybe slightly less pickup and that is because I've got a bit more paint on the stamp now. That's the not working sprayer which is a bit frustrating. There we are. Take the paint off and hopefully this time I'll get a nice clean impression going up this side. There we are. Lovely. Take off some of that paint. The paint is quite deep on the plate at the moment, so that's going to be another thing that will affect the quality of the print. It will affect how much detail we get. But as I say, we're playing. We're finding these things out. And if things go wrong so much the better. I've learnt something then. Let's see what we've got on that one. Oh, it's the delight of an umbellifa and the thing is with this stamp I'm I just love that that is almost what I would get if I were working with a real umbellifa stem. That lovely sort of outlining and detail and that's exactly the kind of thing I was after. Really enjoying that midnight up there. So midnight is definitely going to be part of this next one. On to there. And we might let it mix perhaps with some sea glass. Let's pop that down here. And again, I've still got all those lovely blue-green turquoises going on already here. So that, oh, see, look, this is going to be lovely and moody and atmospheric. That's really exciting. And it sort of makes me want to use the umbellifers again. That's quite a lot of paint on there again. So I might just take some off. Oh, see, And this is why you have spare paper hanging around. How beautiful is that? Just like that. And then just take a little bit off there, creating more texture on that background. I think we'll, think we'll go for a mix, shall we? I think we'll go for maybe some umbellifers. 
wipe it off. Maybe another umbrella for over here. Just making sure I've got contact. Get the bulk of the paint off. Depending on the paint you're working with when you're gel printing, uh, you will get different amounts of playtime. I know that working with the Paper Artsy chalk acrylics, one of the joys of the chalk acrylics, the fresco finished chalk acrylics, is how quickly they dry. So you can move on to new layers. But it does mean that's not always your friend when you're gel printing, where you might sometimes want just a little bit more free playtime on the plate. But if you work with a reasonable amount of speed, you will be fine. And on this one, I'm going to use some of this background texture stamp, the view from above umbellifers, just to create an extra little bit of detail into particularly into this beautiful night sky up here. I think that lifting of the paint is going to create a beautiful contrast. So I might just go in with a couple more of those just to get the dance of those going across the sky there. And let's see what we've got. It's the excitement of gel printing is that I've got some idea of what's going on here, but until I actually lift the print, I won't know for certain what it is that I've got in my results. But I, I'm really enjoying that midnight sea glass combination of paint just just as it is. Uh, so anything else is a bonus. <laughs> That's lovely. Those hits of white in that midnight sky and just the sort of hint of the meadow flowers across the rest of the print. While the paint is wet, it, it won't be so easy to see what's going on. But I will, as always, pop a little montage at the end once these are dried so that you can see the full impact of some of these prints. I think I need that midnight combination with a little bit more green. This might this might have to be the last one we pull for today, maybe. <laughs> Otherwise, it's going to be another extended edition of A Few Minutes of Fun, if I'm not careful. It, it, I end up enjoying myself too much, that's the trouble. Sea glass was the other ingredient, wasn't it, that I was really enjoying. So there's a bit of sea glass onto the plate. And of course, I've still got some midnight and some sea glass from the previous incarnation. So quite a firm pressure to spread out that sea glass there and then quite a firm pressure on the other end of the brayer to just get that Granny Smith. That's of course, that's what it is. Granny Smith to spread out a little bit from the blotches it went in on. Oh, that's, that's a beautiful paint combination, just, just like that. I'm almost tempted to just pull the print as it is. No, I'm going to do for I'm going to go for the full mix. So we're going to have some bells up there and some bells down here. Oops, did a little slide on that one. Not to worry, it's blowing in the wind. Little spritz of paint because I've said that it's going to be the last. So I shouldn't be needing to use that again. And that's got quite a lot of paint on it now. Another umbrella for maybe here. Make sure it picks up. Yes, there we go. And a spritz of paint on that. <clears throat> spritz of paint, spritz of water. Uh, poppies, maybe one through here at an angle. Little wipe and then one maybe, ooh, it's gonna have to be a tall one up to the top which means I might just pop some stems here to just create that look of it joining up at the bottom. Spritz of water. So I can come back to those later and that spritz of water means I can clean those up in a bit. Let's get a piece of paper onto there. Firm pressure all over, just making sure I've got all those bits. There's a little bit of fluff made its way onto the plate there so that will change what's happening underneath not to worry it's just a few minutes of fun and while i'm doing this with these meadow flowers i should of course say you can try this with any stamps you like um as i said i was specifically thinking about trying to create sort of meadow fields and grasses and that sort of look with these but you can of course use 
any stamps in your collection and create a stamp. Probably not too fine detail. If you've got a real, oh, that's a lot of paint. If you've got a very fine detail stamp, then you're going to probably encounter a few problems in terms of getting all that detail to happen, unless you work with a very thin coating of paint, which I've conspicuously failed to do here. There we are. Thank you, Hyde Park, for coming out. I'm going to have to have a look what's going on in there. I might just, with a piece of tissue, take off some of that paint because that's way too much going on. And I think we might just need a little bit of azure in the sky. Although this one, I'm not planning this one as a sky print because what I want to use now, having spritzed water all over the actual flower stems, is I'm going to do one that is a patterned piece. So one of the joys of the view from above stamps is that they give you a lovely ability to create pattern, whether that's all poppy seed, which is what I might do now. Poppy seed, poppy seed, poppy seed, poppy seed. Uh, first of all, wipe that off. And then this one, which has had a spritz of water on it, so it should be all right. <laughs> Can't quite see what's where, so there might be some overlaps going on here. Pick it up, pick it up. Maybe one of those in the middle. Just creating some patterning with these shaped stamps. And there's the bells view from above, which is quite a nice one because it's got a lovely sort of almost heart, almost triangle pattern to it. So you can vary the direction of that one quite substantially and get a different kind of look. But they're great for creating edging, for creating um, frames. I'm just going to try and get rid of that little bit of fluff there and this little bit of thread here before I put down my paper and see what I've got in the way of meadow flower patterning on the top here. And away it comes. Ho, ho, ho. Yep, very happy with that as a final pull. Again, tricky to see while the paint is still wet and it's catching the light. But as I say, if you hang on for the montage right at the end, you'll get to see all these prints in a bit more detail. So that's my little session with the gel plate for today. Again, I'm going to make sure I've spritzed these with water so that I can get all of that paint off now with a good firm nail brush. Painty fingers, always the sign of a good time. So that's another few minutes of fun. Hang on to see all those prints in close up at the very end. But in the meantime, if you've enjoyed these few minutes of fun, do click the thumbs up button if you've got any questions or thoughts. It's so lovely to read your feedback in the comments. And if you haven't yet signed up to subscribe, I would love it if you would, so that you can enjoy lots more minutes of fun in the future. Thanks so much, everybody, and happy crafting all. Mm -hmm.